know, I'm going to jump right in and let's get started. So number one, travel sells itself. Have you heard that before? Travel, you don't really do anything. Travel sells itself. It's like, it's an easy product. You just tell people you sell travel and bada boom, bada bing, you will be selling travel out the yin yang, right? Have you heard that before? That's number one. Hey, when you become a travel agent or you sign up, you are going to get, you know, so many travel discounts. Uh, you are going to get free trips. It's going to be amazing, right? And you're going to be able to travel for free. You're going to be able to do all this amazing stuff. You know, I'm not telling you this is what I'm saying. What I'm asking you to put is, have you heard this before? Maybe you heard it when you were recruited. Maybe you, were, you heard it when you found out about the fact that you could actually make money being a travel agent, right? That when you were told about the opportunity to become a travel professional, it was equated to financial freedom. Okay, so that means that you guys have heard these things before, right? So you've heard these, I don't know if they're lies or truths, but that's the reason why we're here today. What I want to say before we uh, jump into this topic is I want to introduce myself. My name is Sunday Gardner. I am your online travel boss. I'm talking all things launching, marketing, and operating a successful travel business. And today's topic, I want to, I wanted to talk about the elephant in the room. And you're like, the elephant in the room? What are you talking about, Sunday? Well, the elephant in the room is what you may have been told when you were recruited by your host agency or your company or by the person that told you about the opportunity. So what I want to talk about today in today's uh, live or training information session, uh, you know, show up to you. Uh, to be is really talk about that elephant in the room in terms of what you were told when you started in this business or when you learned about this business versus the truth and what you may have since discovered versus where you really see yourself or saw yourself when you decided to join, right? So we're going to talk about the ugliness of the travel business and MLMs, right? So many of you are going to be like, you know, why MLMs? Why is that part of the conversation, right? Because the reality is 70% and the percentage is probably even higher. But when it comes to the members in this group, it's probably 80, 90% of you all found out about the travel business opportunity through someone who is associated with a network marketing company, right? Now, Hopefully you didn't get on this live because you thought I was going to be trash in that because I don't really care how you get your superpower. I don't care if you got it through a network company. I don't care if you got it through, you know, Santa Claus. But, you know, the reality is once you sign up with said company, you have an, an amazing superpower to book travel. The problem is, is you don't know what to do with it. So we're going to talk about all of that that is what you were promised versus what the truth is. And what's false and what are you going to do about it now that you're in or if you're thinking about coming in, right? So are you guys down for that? Like, is that something you guys want to talk about? Truth versus false, right? What did I write? I put truth versus fiction and all that is in between when it comes to starting and operating a travel business versus the opportunity that your network marketing company multi-level marketing company, whatever they're calling themselves, because again, I don't care what it is, right? There are some people that are recruited by just host agencies in and of itself, some who are recruited by network marketing companies, MLM companies, whatever, right? But the point is, is we want to talk about truth versus fiction today, okay? All right, you guys ready? Because I'm only spitting fire and truth tonight. So I'm going to bust those bubbles of fiction and I'm going to talk to you about the truth as I see it. And I personally have experienced it. But again, my experience does not represent everything that is the truth, but it only represents Sunday's experience. Okay, let's go. I got people who are ready. So here is the thing. Tonight we're going to talk about truth versus fiction. But I'm gonna, I, I, want, I want to be like super, super clear about my stance, Sunday Gardner's stance and what I stand for and what I'm doing 
in the travel industry space. I do not recruit. Now, at some point in the future, we do have a plan to become a host agency and allow people to get the superpower through our Travel Agents United. We're not there yet, but we intend to do that, right? Won't be a network marketing setup. It'll be just a true host agency setup. But right now, what we do and what my team does is we train and coach people who are interested in starting a travel business for the purposes of booking clients. Now, that's not to me that I don't like people who are recruiting, that I don't want to help people who are recruiting, or I think that people who are recruiting are bad people. I don't have an opinion one way or the other. That's just not what I do. I don't train people on that superpower. I train people, excuse me, on the superpower of booking clients, attracting clients, relating to clients, and selling to clients travel. Does that make sense? So hopefully there's no like con confusion about what Sunday does and what her team does. And you have two options when it comes to pulling the trigger on becoming a travel business owner from that perspective, right? You can learn how to book travel yourself. You can learn how to launch yourself. You can learn how to operate yourself. You can learn all of this yourself. The reality is, is probably the host agency that you've connected with assumes that you already know it or they let you fend for yourself. Comes in Sunday Gardner and her team of professionals here to help you solve that problem. That's your number one option, right? Your number two option is is you can you can come on board with us, right? And we'll help you with launching, operating, and marketing your travel business, right? Again, my focus is on the operations, launching, marketing of your travel business proper. I don't help you recruit. I don't help you build teams. That's not what I do. Nor do I team bash, nor do I recruit bash. That's not what I do either, okay? All right, so let's hopefully that's clear. You really have a third option, right? You can do nothing. You can have this dream of having a travel business and do absolutely nothing with it. But, you know, I'm frowning on that because I hope you're going to take action and you're going to do something, right? You can learn it yourself, right? You can comb the internet. You can, you know, try and find mentors to, to help you. You can ask your apply. You can ask people. That's your option. That's one option. Or you can go with a program that steps you through whatever it is, right? That is what my stance is, right? So don't come in my inbox talking about, I don't like this. I can't believe you said that Sunday because my stance is very clear and I've been clear about that from the beginning, right? All right, so you guys ready for truth or fiction? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the truths and the fiction items that I have heard throughout the years when it comes to the travel business and the MLM recruiting companies. And we're going to bust the bubble. We're going to identify if that's a truth or if it's fiction, and if it's fiction, what the reality is. Okay, so let's get started. Number one, travel sells itself. That is fiction. <laughs> that is such fiction, right? You know, I was told that when I was first recruited into this business, right? I was told that travel sells itself. And the reality, nothing sells itself, not consistently, right? You can get somebody who is like, oh my God, you are a travel agent. I want to book with you, right? But you can't consistently make sales like magically, right? Just like, I want to make sure that that's clear. You cannot consistently make sales by magic. You can't become six figure, seven figure business owner by magic. Like it's not selling itself. You got business processes in place to make that happen, Captain. Right. You've got to have a plan in place in order for you to sell travel consistently. If you're thinking about quitting your job and this become your full time gig, it's not because it's going to sell itself. Right. So I want to burst that bubble. Number one. Right. You guys let me know if that makes sense. Right. Does that make sense? Travel does not sell itself. You have to build out a marketing plan, a sales plan for you to get it to sell, right? You got to work at sales. You got to work at attracting people to your business consistently if you expect to quit your job and do this full time, right? Now, you want this to be a side hustle. You can get clients maybe on referrals, maybe occasionally, 
you know, maybe you'll be okay for you to get some occasional sales, right? But it's not selling itself, right? That's just that, that's just that's just not true, right? I mean, I don't want to call nobody a liar, but it's a lie because it don't sell itself, right? Travel does not sell itself. All right, number two, friends and family are all you need to make this business work. That's bullshit. You know, me, I mean, if you listen to any of my lives, you'll hear me tell you friends and family are inconsistent as hell, right? If, if travel doesn't sell itself, then who the hell are you selling travel to? It's not your friends and family, not consistently. Because once you get through that warm market and you're trying to quit your job, because let me tell you, I talk to at least 15, 20 of you guys a week, new people a week who are interested in starting in our program or interested in determining if it's the right fit for them or not. And what I will tell you is all of you want to quit your job. Like everybody who, who wants this business wants to quit their job. They want to quit their full-time job and they want this to be their passion. They want this to be the thing that they're doing every single day, making dreams happen. And you know what? You're not doing that with friends and family. So friends and family is all you need to make this business work, make the world go around. Not inconsistent friends and family, you don't, right? You need strangers, right? So the, the truth of the matter is it's not that you need friends and family. Really, all you need is strangers. You need a consistent way to attract strangers to your travel business, and then you're in there like somewhere, right? Just want to make sure that that's clear, right? So write that down. Friends and family are inconsistent. Uh, that's a truth. But what is false is friends and family are all you need in your business to be successful, profitable, quit your job type of money. That's what I'm talking about. You guys are talking about you want to replace incomes, right? I mean, I don't know if you're five, six figures, four figures, three figures. I don't give a shit what you are. If you're trying to replace your full-time job, do this full-time, you need strangers, right? I need strangers and lots of them attracted to my business to make this work. All right, number three, all people who sign up with the host agency are travel business owners. That's not true. That's false. That's not true. By virtue of you signing up with the host agency doesn't make you a business owner. What that makes you is an independent contractor of somebody's host agency. Nine times out of 10, if you look at the contract that you've signed up, you're not an owner of anything. You're not a business owner. You're a contractor. You're contracting through that host agency. And now you are effectively an extension of their company. Unless, of course, you sign up under your own company and you've done the work to become your own business owner. Does that make sense? Like, that's part of the, that's part of the ugly truth that's being told to you all when you get recruited or when you're told about this opportunity is that all you need to do is sign up with this host agency and voila, voila, I don't know if that's even the word, voila, I think it is, voila, was that Italian? Voila, and you are a business owner. That's not true. You're not a business owner when you sign up with the host agency. What you are is an independent contractor of that host agency. You want to build a business. You want to build a business that allows you to create income for you that replaces your full-time job. That means you need to set up shop. You need to create a business that allows you to quit your full-time job. You got to put in the work that allows you to, to quit your full-time job. You're not paying $179.99 and $39 a month and you're a business owner. That, that's not how it works. It doesn't work in any, any business startup organization that I've ever been a part of. I'm speaking Sunday's truth, right? I've been around the block several times. I'm probably the most worked person in, in the creation of work, right? I've worked pretty much everywhere I can think of. And I don't never know for you to start a business, you make a small one-time investment and voila, you're a business owner. Let me tell you what makes you a business owner. You're registering with your county with a business name. You're getting an EIN number that says that you're illegal in the eyes of Uncle Sam. That makes you a business owner. You're getting a license that says that you have X business. That makes you a business owner. You paying taxes underneath that business is what makes you a business owner. You making decisions about to hire, fire people 
that's what makes you a business owner, right? You taking the risk of investing in yourself so that you can get the right knowledge, so that you can learn what you don't know to effectively run a business makes you a business owner, right? It's not easy to be a boss. And it doesn't cost once $179.99. Now I'm picking on one MLM's company's numbers, right? I'm not saying, but the point is it takes more than just one sign up. It takes effort, sweat, tears, and a whole lot of, you know, know-how for you to become a business owner. All right. So I just want to, I want to burst that bubble, right? Signing up with the host does not make you a business owner. What it makes you is an independent contractor. There's a lot more steps that you need to do to make you a business owner. Okay. All right. Number four. All right. All right. You can get all the free trips you can desire becoming a travel agent. <sighs> right. I totally like believe that. Like I have like five people in my family, you know, my immediate family, not including my mom. So she's listening, mom, you make six. Right. So my immediate family, right. Husband, three kids, there's five. And when I signed up, I was like, you know how much it costs like for airline tickets for five people, not to mention, you know, you want to like not fly economy with that cost just to go up the street. There's nothing free. If you, if you're going to get a discount, I'm, I'm going to guarantee you, you're going to get a good discount, but you're going to pay in time, right? Cause most of these suppliers make you pay, make you take like an exorbitant amount of training in order for you to get any sort of discounts from them. Right? So there's no free, right? And if you do get a free trip out of a supplier, you better bet your ass. You've sold a lot of, you made a lot of sales for that supplier for you to get a free trip, right? Are you guys following me, right? There's nothing free in this world. So let me say that again. There's nothing free in this world. You're gonna pay for it in time or money, right? Nothing. So even as a travel professional, right? For us to get the discounts, and don't get me wrong, we get some good discounts if you take the training. I, I love Marriott's training. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> I love Marriott's discounts. I don't necessarily love their training, but they've got one of the best training programs, I think, out there when you're a new travel professional, right? Um, and their training is really around the hotel industry, understanding um, the hotels and uh, scoring of hotels and all that. And once you get through Marriott's hotel excellence training, you'll get 50% off room, room rates, right? But that training is no joke, right? You want to get cruise discounts, you got to get like bachelor's, master's training, learn all about their ships, learn, I mean, an exorbitant amount of information that, that doesn't help you sell, but you got to go through some stuff to get some stuff, right? Nothing in, in life is free. And that includes the travel business. So when it's, when people tell you, when you signed up that you can get great discounts and you can go on fam trips, familiarization trips, Pay next to nothing. Yeah, but there's a cost to that, either in your time or your effort, right? And you don't just get that out of the gate. You got you to gotta work for it, right? And that's going to be in everything that you do, right? This is not an industry that you can just step in. You get all this stuff and you don't do any work, right? And so I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but that type of attitude that you walk in and you you deserve or you should be given X, Y, Z because you are who you are is why some non-recruited travel professionals don't care for some of the recruited travel professionals because there's not a sense of professionalism that some people exhibit when they get recruited into this business. They have this sense of entitlement and the sense of, well, I paid my, my, my setup fees and I should get all of this stuff. And you've done no work to get there. You've not proven yourself internally or to anybody else that you can. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think you owe anybody anything. If you decide to become a business owner, you don't owe anybody anything. But damn it, if you haven't done the work to be a business owner, you don't deserve anything, right? That's just my own personal opinion. You don't deserve anything, right? I busted my ass to get here, right? So if somebody asks, tells me, well, Sunday, 
you don't know what you're talking about. Hell, I don't. I mean, I've busted my ass to get here. And I'm still busting ass to stay here, right? In the space that I'm in, right? So I've earned that spot to consider myself to be a professional and an expert in the thing that I'm an expert in, right? Same thing for you. If you want to claim that you're a travel professional, first be professional and make sure that you've done the work to get there, right? Just because you signed up with the host agency doesn't make you a professional, right? Putting in the hours is what makes you a professional. I remember when I first started in the online space, this was about six years ago, right? I remember that I read that it takes a thousand hours of you studying a thing before you're considered an expert. Did you hear me? A thousand hours. A thousand hours. That's a lot of time, right? My YouTube video, my YouTube channel has a hundred plus videos of an hour. Probably I do about 45 minutes to an hour on most of my videos. That's over a thousand hours worth of video time I've done talking about launching, marketing, and operating. Right. So just alone, I've spoken over a thousand hours, not to mention all of the training that's not on YouTube that I've done. Right. I'm an expert in my field because I've worked my ass off to be. You want to be an expert in your travel niche, then you need to work your ass off to get there. You need to work your ass off to get the knowledge that really makes you the expert that allows you to demand the fees and the prices that I'm telling you, you should be charging for that expertise. Right. So that's what I want you to do, right? You want to get free trips, work your butt off to get them, right? Position yourself to get them, but they don't come automatically, right? So that's the the bubble bust there, right? You can get some free trips. Absolutely. Suppliers will throw free trips at you, but you better sell with them, right? You better have picked them and you better be selling for them, right? Nothing in life is for free. Remember that. Number five, it takes thousands of dollars for you to be able to own or get your license to book and sell travel. That's a lie, people. It's a lie. It's a lie, I believe, for a very long time. You don't need an ARC number to sell travel. It's really very easy to become your own licensed travel agent. It's very easy, right? It doesn't cost thousands of dollars. It doesn't cost you going to school. It really is very easy. Unfortunately, it's so easy, all you have to do is pay a fee to a couple of two different agencies, and then most suppliers will recognize you as a person who can sell travel, right? Now you do that, I don't recommend you going that route because you probably don't have the experience, right, to be able to do that. So I recommend get going with the host agency for all of the reasons of just having that sort of supplier support, the ability to go and try out different suppliers, develop relationship with suppliers, so that you can determine which route you want to go on before you decide to go independent. But it doesn't cost thousands of dollars. It doesn't take thousands of years, right? It literally takes an investment of a couple of hundred dollars, several hundred dollars in CLIA or TRUE, and you can become a licensed independent travel agent agency, right? So check it out if you want to, you want to, you want to, if you want to check, what is that? Fact check me. That's all it takes. TRUE? or CLIA. That's all you need to become your own licensed travel agency. You do not have to go through a host. All right. You ready? What number are we on? We are on number six. Truth or fiction? Number six. You need a host agency to start and operate your own travel business. That's fiction. You don't, right? You don't need to start with a host agency. Nine times out of ten, when my clients come to me and they tell me that they haven't selected a host agency, I'm like, that's fine. You don't need to do that yet, right? I want you to start your business first. I want you to get your business established first, right? So that when you do partner with a host agency, you're doing it in your business name, not your social security and your own personal name, right? So you don't need a host agency to start. Now, I do think that host agencies are great partners for newbie travel agents who've never done this or travel professionals who've never done this, I think it's a great partnership. I think it's a strategic partnership. I think that you should think of your host agency as the the path to your suppliers, right? I think it's great. So do it, but it's not required to start, right? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, I'm going to breathe because, you know, like that's what I do. Like I'm going to take a sip 
make sure I didn't miss anything. Go back a little bit. And then I got, I got, I got four more truth or fiction items to bust. Are you guys finding value in this? Is this helping you guys? Right? Are you guys agreeing, disagreeing? Here's the thing. Everybody has an opinion and you know what an opinion does, right? <laughs> or assumptions do, right? They make an ass out of you and me, right? The point is, is that whatever decision you make, do it with knowledge. Do it and be as educated as you possibly can be so that you know that you're making decisions that are good for yourself, okay? All right, so that's number seven. Number eight, all training is the same, and that is false. All training is not the same. So when the companies tell you that they're going to be provide, provide you training, your question needs to be, what kind of training? And then you need to know what kind of training you need. What are you deficit in that you need? Because all training is not created equal, right? 99% of the training that host agencies give you is supplier training. It's training on the suppliers, how, how information about the suppliers, what the suppliers offer, what they do, features of their resorts or their, their accommodations. It's supplier-focused training, right? Some of the suppliers are gracious enough to provide you marketing training on how to sell their product, but most of the training around uh, what you get when you sign up with the host is supplier-focused. But there's all this other training that most newbie business owners need, particularly new business owners in the online space, right? And here's a few of them. Business training, right? This is just business basics, right? This Most of you have never opened up a business. You've only worked for someone else. And let me tell you, it's a whole lot easier working for someone else than creating a business and working for yourself, right? So business basic training, right? Another training is operational training. This is processes. What should you do from point A? You get somebody and, you know, they come in the door, they make a request, right? And you want to fulfill that request. Should you charge fees or should you not, right? What, uh, what uh, you know, are you invoicing? What are the rules around invoicing? Are you receiving? What happens if they do a chargeback, right? All of those operational training uh, you should have, right? Then you've got marketing. Somebody put that, right? Marketing, marketing training. How do you get strangers to come to you? Right. And I'm going to tell you, it's not randomly posting on social media. Now, you'll get some strangers, but will they be the right strangers? Right. I don't want random strangers. I want strangers that meet the criteria of my ideal client. Right. I don't want people who sell uh, coaching services to, uh, you know, who believe in uh, Rocky or whatever that thing is. I don't want social media coaches um, in my group. I want people who want to, who, who want to start travel businesses. Right. I have a very defined audience that I'm looking for. You do, too. Or maybe you don't because you haven't done that work. You haven't done that research. Maybe you've never conducted marketing research. Right. All of that requires some sort of training if you've never done it. Sales training. You probably think I'm going to you know, I'm going to sell travel. And um, because it sells itself, I don't need sales training. But you do because that's what you are. You're a marketer and you're a sales person, right? So nine times out of 10, you need training on how to do that. I know I did. I know I still get training. I have a coach on marketing and training, right? And I know how to market and train. And I still have a coach that helps me with marketing and tra uh, selling in my business, right? And that's because to get to every next level that I want to, I've never done it before, right? So I'm looking for a coach that's going to teach me how to get there, right? And I go backwards and teach y'all how to do that too, right? So that's what I'm saying is there's all sorts of training that you need when it comes to starting a business, right? What kind of training do you need? And when you get ready to sign up with host agency or company, make sure that you're clear about what type of training you're going to get, but all training is not the same. All right, and then number nine, we got two more, and then I'm gonna wrap this bad boy up. Let's see, all right, good, doing good on time. Number nine is all you need to do is sign up and you're done. That's it. Like you sign up with your company and you're done. That's it. Let's even say you decide to become independent. I sign up with True and I sign up with Clea and I'm done. And that's not true. That simply is just not true. There's so much more to starting your business than just signing up. There's more than signing on the dotted line. You know, I want you to think of like starting your business like buying a house, right? When you buy your house, 
you know how much paperwork you fill out, right? You fill out all this paperwork. If you never bought a house, it doesn't matter. You rent, you still got to sign a lease, you got paperwork, you sign a contract, and then you got to decorate the bad boy, right? You got to get electricity, you got to get cable, you got to get, you know, stuff so that you can live in that bad boy. Then you got to get stuff that's going to make you comfortable in that bad boy. Not only that, you got to then figure out how you're going to get people to come to your party all the time, right? That's your place of business to buy stuff, right? That's all on you to figure that out, right? Signing the dotted line just gets you in, right? You still got to do all the work that gets the party started every single day that you want people buying from you, excited about your product, excited about who you are as a service provider, right? And making sure that they that you know uh, that you are known in the area of people that you want to sell to. Let me tell you what causes business failure. It's not because of a bad business idea. Most of the time, it's because of obscurity. People don't know who you are. They don't know to buy from you. And that's a direct result of the fact that you don't know how to market and you probably don't know how to sell properly, right? So it's not because the idea is bad. It's because you don't know how to market and get in front of enough people so you can make money consistently, right? That's sort of a powerful thing to know is that you can control that. If you can control how you are marketing and you're getting in front of the right people consistently, strangers, right? And you're selling and able to get them to buy from you, you're going to be in business and you're going to be in business for a long time, right? So this is what I want you to learn out of today. So we've done nine. So the very last thing before I get out of here tonight, finish up my glass of wine is this is false, but the lie that has been told was told to me and I told it to myself, which is the sad part is I don't need to invest in training to start because I can figure it out on my own. That is the lie that I told myself when I first became a business owner. So I spent years, thousands of dollars trying to figure out shit on my own, right? I can't get that time back. I can't get the, the enormous amount of time I lost, right? Building websites on my own, figuring out how to market on my own, learning how to be all of the different roles as a business owner that you need to be on your own. So had I invest like I do now in training and in coaching, right, I know I would be so much further along. But I'm glad that I am where I am, right, because, again, my journey is my journey, right? But the lie that I told myself was I don't need to invest to start. I can just start, right? And by virtue of starting means that I did not, at that time, didn't know the investment of time that I was going to have to put in in order to get the knowledge that I needed to be successful right? That is the biggest lie you can tell yourself. That's the biggest lie anyone else can tell you, right? So I both, hopefully I burst that bubble. All right. So before I go, that's a 10 truths and fiction. That's ugly, right? That's the ugly story. We now have got it all straight. Hopefully I know a lot of people that that's their journey where they focus, they, they were recruited in, right? They're not doing the recruiting side or maybe they're doing it minimally. Maybe they're doing it greatly. I don't care, right? They're doing it. And they're still focused on travel, right? Again, that 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 relationship that you have with your host, whoever or however you got it, it's again, it's just it's just the path to get you to to be able. It gets it gives you the superpower. I can't think of it any other way because literally, I consider my ability to book travel anywhere in the world as a superpower. Like I can decide tomorrow, I want to go to Timbuktu, right? I don't even know where Timbuktu is. I don't even know is that even a real place, right? I can decide to go there and I can go and find out some supplier. I can go make a phone call, tell them I'm a travel professional. They'll roll out the red carpet, tell me what I need to do. And I can have myself, my family, and anybody else in Timbuktu as long as I can get to the plane there, right? That's that's incredible power, right? That's what we do. That's what we can do. That's a superpower, right? Many of you are about to embark upon this journey and you don't know how to use your superpower. So this is where I invite you. If you want to learn how to use your superpower or you're ready to jump into that superpower, then I encourage you to put the following here. Jump. Put jump in the comments tonight, 
right? If you're ready to jump and you're ready to learn how to use this superpower, maybe you decided you want to go with a uh, host agency, whatever. You've done your research, you know your financials, you know they're going to stay out of your business. Maybe they are going to be in your business. doesn't matter, but you like them and you're ready to jump, right? Put jump, I'm going to have, Ra uh, not Rachel, Rachel, someone else on our team do. And what they're going to do is they're going to determine if the training program that we have is going to be a good fit for you and what you want to do in your travel business. Maybe you've already jumped, right? And you know that you can't figure it out anymore and you're tired of trying to put all the pieces together. Maybe you're, you're believing some of this fiction items that we went over today and you want some clarity on that. Put jump. They're going to reach out to you via messenger. And what they're going to do is they're going to figure out where you are in your travel business journey. And then based on that figuring out, they'll know if it's a logical next step for you to meet with me so that we can talk about travel passions to profits. If it's not the right time, that's okay. If you just show up every week, I know you got a passion, right? Because listen to me for an hour talk about something that deals with travel right means that you got a passion for this stuff so if you've got a passion you love the travel business but you're still struggling on trying to figure out how to do this marketing thing how to get the launch right right how to sell consistently right how to get your message and how to get out in front of your ideal client maybe you don't even know who your ideal client is right jump we'll figure it out together all right all right hey ladies and gentlemen it has been a pleasure coming to you tonight. Thank you for joining me live. And for those who watch me in the replay, I appreciate you joining uh, me in the replay. Do not forget to push hashtag replay. Listen, my name is Sunday Gardner. I will be back here next week. And we have got some fun that's happening next week. But I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. So next week, I will be here with some uh, funness. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. We're going to be out here next Wednesday. All things launching marketing and operating a successful travel business. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.